good afternoon students so this is our first lecture of circuit theory so basically in our this subject we will be dealing with our circuits circuits that will be consisting of your passive elements that is your resistor that you symbolize like this inductor that you symbolize like this and a capacitor that you symbolize like this so we will be dealing with all of your these three passive elements in your circuit theory and we will be doing the numericals as well right so basically in today's lecture we are going to study about the kirchhoff's voltage law you all are very familiar about it what is it if you just check out what i have drawn here you can just see that we have got a resistance r1 here second resistor r2 here and the third resistor r3 here this is how we show our voltage source you all i think must be knowing about it so this is our voltage source v so according to kirchhoff's voltage law if there is a closed loop here then the total voltage the sum of the total voltages in your this particular closed circuit will be equal to zero right so depending on that what we are going to get is let's say that this is how your let me just rub out your this thing and here we go with so now just look at the circuit diagram so this is our voltage source v and this is the current i that is flowing so when the current is entering the resistor here it will get a positive this will be negative now current passes on to your second resistor here it will be positive here it will be negative so this is my v2 across r2 then my current reaches at this point so here a positive and here a negative with voltage v3 here now you all must be familiar with the ohm's law i think all must be knowing what is ohm's law so it is basically equals to v equals to ir and this is going to be used in every lecture hundreds of time so you all should keep it in your mind that what is ohm's law because this is the thing that i am going to ask you again and again so now v is this and ir is what we are getting here this is v1 v2 and v3 because your v1 will be equal to i multiplied by r1 v2 will be equal to i multiplied by r2 and v3 will be equal to i multiplied by r3 right so now depending upon your kirchhoff's voltage law we are going to put all the values here so it will be your v will be equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 where the numerical values you can see up to here that v1 will be equal to this thing so depending on your this equation now we are going to start with our set of numericals for your kirchhoff's voltage law so this is our numerical number 1 in which we have to find the value of v1 using our kvl right so if you just check out your this circuit just mark the polarity of your voltage current is entering here so this is positive negative again positive here again positive negative again positive negative and again positive negative so now we have to find the value of v1 so it will be equal to just see here that whenever we have to add it it should be like negative positive negative positive this is how a battery gets added up when you have all like negative positive negative positive negative positive it will be added so this is the main thing that you have to check in your this diagram so according to kvl in the closed loop we are going to add up all the voltages so just check here negative positive then positive negative so that means 30 volts will be equal to what positive negative then again this is your positive negative positive so all will be added up so i am going to write 2 plus 1 plus v1 plus 3 plus 5 i don't think that there will be any doubt till here so now what you have to do is keep v1 at one side add up all of this and take this hole here 
and subtracted from 30. So that makes out to be your 30 minus 5 plus 6 will be 11. And here you go with your 19 volts. So the answer here is 19 volts, right? So let's start with our second numerical. So this is our numerical number two and a little bit tricky. You have to find two things here. Firstly, you have to find the total current I and then after finding the current, you have to find the voltage drop across your this 30 ohm resistor. So when you see your this numerical, what you can do is to simplify your this circuit. And if you just check out here, this these are not joined here. They are just overlapping, but are not connected. They are not touching each other, these two wires. So basically it is just like we twist something. We have got a wire and we twist it like this. So what we are going to do is we are going to untwist it and make it a simple circuit. So what I am going to do is I am going to draw the circuit again by twisting it back here. So now my this thing is going to move upwards because I'm going to do it like twist it like this. So my positive terminal of the battery will go upward and this two ohm resistor is going to come downwards. So this makes it to be positive here and negative here. So this is my now 100 volts battery. Now my this two ohms is going to go here. So this is my two ohm and then is my 30 ohm because this will remain here. Only my two ohm and 100, vo 100 volt battery is uh, getting twisted here and rest everything will be same. Now the same circuit I have simplified like this. Let me put out all the values of resistances and voltages. So now you can see that this is a closed circuit and the current direction has been given from positive of the battery of 100 volts. This is my I. So now you have to give the polarity to all the resistances. So this will be positive, negative. So now we have to add up all the So now we have to add up all the voltages and apply our Kirchhoff's voltage law. So let's start with our 100 volts source. So this is negative, positive. So positive, negative, right? So I'm going to write 100 volts here. And then I'm going to write here 8 multiplied by I because I have to write in terms of my voltages because I am applying KVL. I will be coming on to the second method by which we can also do it. But here I am just applying KVL. So this is because I is the current in this loop. So 8I will be the voltage across our 8 ohm resistor. Then you come on to our next thing. This is negative, positive, positive, negative, opposite polarity. So on the other side. So then is your positive, negative, same polarity. So again, positive, negative. That is 30I. Why I have written here 40 only? Because this is my voltage source and not a resistance. So as such, 40 volts will be written there. And lastly, it is my 2I. So can now I shift my 40 here? 100 minus 40 will make it to be 60 here. And here I'm going to add all these. So 8 plus 2 is 10 and 10 plus 30 will be 40. So here I get the value of I as 60 upon 40. That makes it to be 1.5 amperes. So once I have found the value of I, can I get my this V30? So V30 will be equal to what? That is 30 ohms multiplied by IR. No? So 30 is my resistance and the value of I I just got is 1.5 that makes it to be 45 volts. Getting it? So this is how we have applied our KVL. Now the other method that I can apply is to calculate the current directly using my Ohm's law and then applying KVL. So here Let's say that I have got, this is negative, positive, concentrate on only these two 
values of voltages. This is negative positive, then positive negative. Opposite polarity, that means total voltage in my this circuit will be 100 minus 40 because both are of opposite polarity. So this is my total voltage in the circuit. Now I is equals to what? V upon R and the total resistance will be what? This is 30 plus 2, 32 plus 8, it will be 40. This makes it to be 60 and here I can just put 60 divided by 40. Again, the answer is 1.5 and then you can apply again the Ohm's law. So that will give your V30 equals to your IR that is 1.5 into 30 ohms that is again going to give you 45. You can apply any method to solve these numericals but the answer will remain same. So, and because we have to find the value of VAB just put your pens here move from A move to 12 then move to B. Whatever you get in this path from A to B just write it down. What you have got for VAB it should be equal to the voltage across 4 ohm plus because this is 12 volts only. So it will be as such 12 or if you want to write it in terms of V's, we can just write here that it is the voltage drop across 12 volt that is 12 only. Plus again, this is my 4 ohm resistor. So this completes my path from A to B. Now we have to calculate the value of V4 and this V4 while my this V12 remains as 12 volts. So if you all know that when we have an open circuit, will the current flow in our this open circuit path? My this current is flowing here. It will come up to here, but if it is not getting any closed path here, my current will not flow. So that means if there is no link between any two points, current will not flow. So we have to take into account that when we are seeing the value of six volts here, current is flowing from here. It is going to find two paths here, right? But whenever the current is flowing, the current that is coming to 4 ohm, it is passing from here, coming to here, coming to here and back to the negative terminal. But your this current, if you think that some current from 6 volt should go towards this side, will never come back from this path only. So that means no current is going to go there. So your this current is going to flow like this only. So what we have to find is I have to find current I1 here and my V4 for my this circuit one will be equal to I1 multiplied by four ohms. Similarly, when I'm going to talk about my this circuit I2, so this is my positive. So here it will be my I2. So your this V4 here will be equal to I2 multiplied by four. So I think we can find out the values of I1 and I4 using I2 using your Ohm's law. Total voltage is 6 volts and our total resistance is 10 here, 6 plus 4. Similarly, if I am going to find out my I2 here, so it will be equal to, in this circuit, you can see that the total voltage is 12 volts. So I am applying the formula of V upon R here. I is equals to V upon R. So it will be total voltage is 12 volts here and the total resistance is 14 ohms. So this will be my I2, right? So I am going to put the values here. So now I am going to put all my these values of the currents to find VAB in my this equation. So VAB will be equal to this V4 for the first circuit will be equal to now I1 becomes 0 0.6. So it will be 0 0.6 into 4 then plus. Okay, now we should first check out the polarity. Here the polarity is positive here because the current is entering at this point and negative here. Similarly, the current is entering here. So it will be positive then negative. Now just check for a to B, what is the polarity coming? And then we will be putting the signs here in front of them. 
so it is negative positive then positive negative mind it negative positive positive negative then negative positive so negative positive negative positive these two are going to get added up but your this thing is going to be negative so here the sign will be opposite to the other two so next will then be 0 0.86 multiplied by 4 so when i am going to multiply them and i am going to add them what i am going to get is 2.4 minus 12 plus 3.44 so the total answer that after calculating you are going to get here will be just a second so the answer that is coming out is 6.16 now just check out here that when we are going from a to b if we are going to encounter this negative first then we can take our this minus sign in front of our this four ohm resistor and similarly a minus will come here because we have taken negative for this and then it will become positive and in that case it will be 6.16 but there are no negative markings for the sign you are going to put here so you can take it either way it can be minus 6.16 or plus 6.16 both are correct so i hope that you are going to solve some more numericals based on this and uh, now the next topic that we will be covering out will be your Kirchhoff's current law and the numericals based on that. So for tomorrow's lecture, you all should read what is Kirchhoff's current law and then we will, doing, we will be doing some numericals based on your Kirchhoff's current law. All right. That's all with. Thank you so much.